Wow. Hello there. We have a full house. Please take a seat. Getting ready to start. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for being here. My name is Cesar Penafiel. I'm the co-chair of the Columbia University Coalition for Sustainable Development. Uh, together with our co-organizers, the Ferris Real Film Society, we would like to welcome all of you. A special thanks to Don and Adam, who have worked very hard with me on this event, and without whom this would not have been possible. <laughs> CUCSD, CUCSD is a Colombia-wide organization promoting a debate about sustainable policy solutions for the 21st century. We have a great board with lots of activities planned for this semester. You can see them, well, they probably were there at some point, and we hope that you can join us. We have an event uh, next Tuesday, in fact, uh, at SIPA on, on the 15th floor. Uh, we also would like to thank all our co-sponsors, uh, too long to list. Um, I also would like to give a special thanks to the New York chapter of uh, young, I'm sorry, to the New York chapter of North American Young Generation in Nuclear. A few weeks ago, they took uh, three of, uh, of our board to Indian Point, where we could see firsthand uh, a functioning nuclear reactor uh, just 30 miles from New York City. And I think whether you are pro or against shutting down Indian Point, it is something that you should go see. Um, you should, um, uh, I would encourage you uh, to join NAYGN to learn more about nuclear energy and issues and do cool field trips uh, like this. Uh, to join the chapter, you can, join to, you can go to www.naygn.org. There's a link to join on the top right uh, corner of the homepage, and you can be sure to click NAYGN New York uh, to join. Like I said, it's free. Um, all right, uh, to get started, I would like to, uh, it's an absolute pleasure for me to welcome um, Mr. Novo Tanaka. He is now the president of the Sasakawa Peace Foundation. Uh, he was the former executive director at the International Energy Agency, and he is a big fan of Pandora's Promise, so he will introduce that. Please welcome him. Okay. Hi, guys and ladies. I'm Nobuo Tanaka. Introduced by Caesar, I'm writing a research paper with Caesar in the Columbia's uh, University's Center on Global Energy Policy about the subject which you are going to see today. You are very lucky because you can see the movie tonight, and in fact, that movie changed my life. I was really surprised to see the movie and found out that there is an absolutely interesting technology which may change the perception about the nuclear power in Japan. You know Fukushima, of course. After the tsunami hit the first nuclear power plant in Fukushima prefecture in Japan in 2011, Unfortunately, the disaster happened. It is not because tsunami, but it's because of the human error. It was not prepared enough for that kind of disaster. In fact, it is easy to determine why it is considered to be the human error is the way to compare the several other reactors sites on the same Pacific coast in Japan. These, comp these nuclear power plant sites were hit exactly the similar way as Fukushima Daiichi. It was Onagawa in a little northern part, but much closer to the epicenter. The power plant was built almost same time as Fukushima Daiichi, but built 10 meters higher because Tohoku area is very famous for the tsunami in the history. So the company are quite aware of the risk and built the power plants 10 meters higher and avoided the disaster. There's another plant a little south, 10 kilometers south, of Fukushima Daiichi was Fukushima Daini, the second Fukushima power plant. 
It was safe also because the technology was new and they were built new and emergency power was in-house. Another one which is a little more scary story is called Tokai Dining Plant. It was much closer to Tokyo, about 100 kilometers away. It was hit by tsunami, but the company prepared it by making the wall a little higher. The final touch on the wall of cables and holes were treated and completed just two days before the tsunami, the March 9th. And two out of three emergency diesel turbines, diesel generators, were saved and disaster was avoided. God helps those who help themselves. So, unfortunately, Fukushima Daiichi didn't prepare enough. And this was definitely the mistake of the operators, not only operators, but the TEPCO management, Tokyo Electric's management, the government regulators, or politicians who cannot really prepare for the emergency. Of course, running nuclear reactors has a risk, and we proved the huge risk exists. But at the same time, not running the nuclear reactor has another kind, a different kind of risks. IEA, International Energy Agency, which I was head of, always called for the risk of energy security, especially the geopolitical risks in the Middle East. IEA was created in 1974 after the first oil crisis and making the consumer countries join together to have a strategic stockpile of oil and use it in case of emergency. We have used three times in the history. If something wrong happens in the Strait of Hormuz and the trade or ships are blocked there, Japan lose 85% of oil and about 20% of natural gas. In some region, which is the center of Japan, the Chubu region, Nagoya region, we lose instantly the 40% of power generation because Chubu Electric imports 40% of total power generation from one country, Qatar. So the risk of not operating the nuclear power is obvious from the viewpoint of the IEA. Another risk is that Japan must import oil and gas and coal to replace the absence of nuclear power. We are paying 40 US billion dollars a year for that. And this is the huge cost of not operating the reactor. Another one is certainly Japan is emitting huge carbon dioxide at this moment, facing the serious challenge at the COP, COP21 in Paris in the end of this year. Without nuclear power, Japan cannot commit any kind of targets of CO2 emission reduction. Fourth one, if any, may be Dr. David Weinstein of Colombia said that maybe not running nuclear power means more death of Japanese because of air pollution. So sustainability 
of nuclear power is obvious. But unfortunately, for the Japanese public after Fukushima, sustainability or environmental advantage of nuclear power is not enough to convince the Japanese public to change their views. Japanese concern is about the high-level waste or spent fuels from nuclear reactors. It is accumulating and we may sooner or later face the problem where to store it or where to dispose it geologically. Unfortunately, we haven't found out the place to dispose. Can we do that? Another question for Japanese about nuclear is weapon. After Hiroshima and Nagasaki tragedy, Japanese public is very concerned about nuclear weapons. So the risk of proliferation is another very serious concern of nuclear power. Maybe some of you share this view. Are there solutions or are there proliferation-free technology? Yes, there is. And all of you here today will see that in the movie. This is the message of the movie that there is an alternative nuclear technology available already in the United States. It is the Algon National Laboratory who developed the so-called integral fast reactor system some time ago. Already it ran safely and in 1986 the Algon National Laboratory made an experiment just exactly the same as Fukushima tragedy. Total blackout of the plant, but the reactor stopped safely without human intervention. So the movie says, if this reactor was there in Fukushima, we could have avoided the tragedy, maybe. Also, it, this technology has a very strong proliferation resistance due to their special techniques of pyroprocessing, reprocessing technology. And this technology can be utilized to solve the very serious issue of spent fuel as well as fuel debris which is accumulated and meltdown in the Fukushima Daiichi. Another issue is the waste management. This technology will solve the problem, burn the minor actinide and plutonium which came out of pyroprocessing and radioactivity or toxicity of these high-level waste are much, much easier than the regular light water reactor system. So, this reactor system is much, much more sustainable than the current light water reactor system. Why, even if that is the case, why this reactor system, integral fast reactor, was not taken seriously here in the United States. It's because of politics. Very unfortunate politics aborted this technology, which probably the world, especially Japan, need so much. You will see the movie and success of Admiral Rickover the father of American submarine fleet. 
He made a, such a big success with light water reactor system at the engine of the submarine. But light water reactor is using water for coolant, and it is passive safe in the water, but not on shore. You will find out this success of light water reactor system in the military application prevented or crowding out the fast reactor technology. This is the issue of, in economics, the path, path dependency, or you can call it the paradigm change. Paradigm change is very difficult if this system is successful. All the nuclear scientists, engineers, industry, people are very keen to continue this paradigm while there is much less incentive of changing to the new system. But, ladies and gentlemen, for Japan, we don't have the luxury of the shale oil and gas revolution of the United States. US can wait another century for somebody else developing the technology in nuclear, but Japan cannot. So, ladies and gentlemen, I really want you to see the movie, enjoy it, but understand the very, very interesting messages for the future. Future of the nuclear technology or the sustainable nuclear power is just possible. And I hope you will change or understand the current issue to that extent. We will have several other seminars and events this week in Colombia. Tomorrow, Jeffrey Sachs organized UN conference here. I am organizing Center on Global Energy Policy events on nuclear technology on Friday. Colombia University, I thank these people to offer me the opportunity to talk to you and to work with you for the future of this very, very important technology. Thank you very much.